Hi there, I'm Michael Valaitis and welcome to another edition of On Wine TV, the show that brings you the inside scoop on what's happening in the Ontario wine industry. Today I'm inside the Niagara College Teaching Winery and I'm surrounded by barrels. As consumers though, unfortunately we can't be drinking out of the barrels, we're drinking out of the bottle. So today we're going to have a look at bottling and see how we get the wine from the barrel to the bottle. So we're down in the winery and we're with Terence Van Royen. Um, so Terence, there's some activity going on down here. So um, what's happening? What are you guys bottling today? Hi Mike. Uh, yep, this is the time of the year that we do our first bottling. Um, it's basically late spring bottling, which means that we bottling the white wines of the 2010 vintage, the fresh, fruity, aromatic wines. Um, and what we are doing now, we're handling four of the white wines and as well as the rosé. So Terence, I noticed you guys are using the mobile bottling service. Yeah. Do you want, what's the advantage of a winery using a mobile bottling service as opposed to having your own bottling service? Yeah, there's a number of reasons. Uh, for a small winery to have and maintain and lay out the capital for your own bottling line is pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. The advantage of having a mobile bottler is it's done in two days and it's all over. The other big advantage is that uh, the mobile bottler quotes at a price that prevents us from actually justifying the capital outlay for our permanent line. And then um, we are winemakers and technicians here. We are not bottling specialists. This guy is a specialist and he knows how to run bottling. That's, what, that's all he does. And I've heard that some of the bottling equipment, I mean, there's hundreds of millions of pieces in there and you have to be pretty specialized in knowing what to do. In fact, um, I've had this experience before. If you don't have a full-time mechanic that knows bottling lines, you run into so much trouble and especially if your line is five years and older, uh, pieces, parts of the bottling line uh, degenerate. You also need uh, change parts for the bottling line, so if you have different bottle shapes and sizes, uh, it just pushes up the cost of the bottling very much, whereas this guy, he has any shape and size of bottle that he can handle. So Terence, can you just quickly run through us the basics of how it works, like the flow from your wine from inside the winery to the finished product? Oh, that's easy. Uh, we prepare the wine by stabilizing it after fermentation, clarifying, stabilizing, and then we do filtrations up to a, up to a basically a sterile filtration uh, with a sheet filter. Uh, so the wine is ready and it is pretty much clear. It flows from here by pump. There's a filler bowl inside the, the bottling line of, in the truck, which has a certain volume. And from there it feeds into 16 different spouts so it's a moving line and the bottles get fed up in under the spouts they get filled to a specific height and as they come out they are they get the uh, either the screw cap which is what we're using now or they would have a cork finish then it runs through the labeler and back down the line where we have packers that put the wines back into the bottles easy so we've got a bottle of Riesling fresh off the bottling line. Unfortunately, I can't drink it quite yet. It needs a little bit of time to rest after that bottle shock. But when it's ready, I'll be back and I'll do a tasting with the head winemaker, Terence Van Royen. For On Wine TV, I'm Michael Valaitis. Thanks for tuning in.